All right, today, basically, we're taking the recursive stuff we've taught you already and making this giant formula that allows you to solve really complicated loan and investment problems. Okay, so you're going to learn a lot of stuff about loans and investments. I'm going to jump right into it because we don't have much time because of that thing we started the hour with. I'd like you to find the notes under today's date, which is 2-26 in the assignments category. It's under assignments. You'll find notes. All right. If you can't ever find them, that's not the end of the world. You can just write down some stuff that uh, that's in blue here. Found them? Okay, good. They are there under assignments. And then it says notes, and then it says loans and investments. Okay, so here we are. Uh, looking at this blue formula. What's different than before? Well, it's exactly the same as before. The only weird thing is this person put this at the end. We always put it at the beginning. Okay, so that part's like moved up to the beginning here. We've always had a one and a plus, at least recently. And then there's the rate that it's growing by. It's just got this extra plus 50 here. Okay, that's the only real difference is, is you throw in a number at the end. Now, the next one's going to get even more complicated. I'd like to jump right to that. So go to the next page where it starts with the U0 equals 500. Get to that page. All right, now, if you didn't have an iPad, you'd want to copy down the, the one that's in blue. For those that do have the iPad and you've got the notes up, then you just want to label each thing, as I tell you, like draw an arrow to it like this. That right there, that's the principal. The principal is the starting amount. And if I've got 500 bucks and I want to put it to use, like let's say you had a good Christmas and you did a little bit of babysitting too over the break time and you got 500 bucks together, you could put it to good use by like investing it, making the money grow. Okay. Or this could be instead the beginning of a loan situation. You borrow $500 because you get this business opportunity you want to pursue and you need 500 bucks to make it happen. A lot of people at the beginning of their career, like, uh, um, let me see, at the beginning of Apple computer, there was a guy uh, who sold out his one-tenth of Apple computer uh, for $800. 800 bucks. He owned 10% of Apple, which is now the biggest company in the United States. Okay, it would be worth billions of dollars, and he sold his part for 800 bucks. So you can own part of a company when it's young for pretty cheap. All right. So anyway, uh, Facebook when it first started out, one of their investors gave them like, you know, $10,000 or something like that. One of the friends of of Zuckerberg, and uh, he made millions and millions and millions of dollars because of that little investment so if you can get in early on a business that works okay anyway so this is principal that's the starting amount it's either starting with money or borrowing money next thing uh this little part right here the 0.04 anybody want to take a guess what that is in this scenario it's the what it's the rate yes we usually call it an interest rate but it's the growth rate. That's right. Either way, it's the rate. This little part right here, that's how many times per year it is compounded or added to. It's the number of times per year that you mess with it. Okay. The official name for that is the compounding frequency. How frequently is the interest compounded? That's a compounding frequency freak okay and the next part is this little minus or plus seems innocuous but it is huge it's the difference between a loan and an investment if that is a minus then every month or every four months or four times a year <clears throat> you're going to be subtracting $25 from the total do you get how that's going to make your amount go down over time? If every four months you subtract something from it? So what I'm trying to say is this right here being a minus means that it's a loan. Minus would be a loan, and you are paying off the loan $25 every four months or every four times a year. And if it's a plus, that means that it's growing and that this must have been an investment. And every four times a year you are adding 25 bucks to your investment all right 
Now this four is actually kind of a freak. We almost never use four times a year. There are some things in business that happen four times a year. I'll give you that if you're a company, you have to file taxes and do reports four times a year. Okay, so that's one thing that happens four times a year. But in most consumers' lives, it's 12 times a year. Month, monthly is the big one. So you're gonna see most of these formulas will have a 12 right there because it's monthly payments for your house, monthly payments for your um, loan for your schooling, monthly payments for your car. And just to be clear, I am not a big fan of monthly payments. You have to do them sometimes to get by in life, but they are expensive and they cost you money and you want to avoid them if you can. So we'll talk about that too later. All right, that's the basics. Now let's look at another one and actually construct the formula on the calculator with this. So if you haven't got your graphing calculator out, get it out. You want to borrow one of mine, make it fast. You need this in your calculator to understand it. All right, we are going to take out a loan for $17,000. Let's make sure you just get the general idea here. Annual interest rate 7.9% because car loans are not cheap. You can't get them as cheap as like house loans where you might get 3 or 4% interest. Car loans are much more higher interest because a car is going down in value, so they, there's more risk to the bank. If they have a loan on a house, generally houses go up in value, except for the last few years, but other than that, generally they go up. And so the house isn't as scary of a thing for the, for the uh, bank to own. Because really, until you pay them off, they own your car. Because if you don't ever pay them off, they come, come and take it. That's, there's a show about that called The Repo Man. Okay, they come and take and repossess your car because they own it until you get done paying them. And if you stop paying, it's their car. Okay, so anyway, you make $330 payments each month. All right, so that is the basic facts that we got to put into the calculator. All right, I'm going to help you get this in. If you get this into your calculator right, it's going to make your life so much better for the next week as we talk about this stuff. So please do this carefully. Go to the y equals. First, note that the top line needs to be zero. When did I say to use that? In real world problems, which is what these are all about, that involve time or money, this is involving both. Okay, so there's no brainer we should use zero for our n min. That's u sub zero. All right, next one, u sub n minus one, we always have that. We always have times. You're gonna always need a parentheses here. If you don't have one yet, put one there. Parentheses right there, I'll make it blink, okay? There's a parenthesis there, and then a one, and then a plus. Notice that's not the spot that changes from a plus to a minus. That will always be a plus. Because we're not gonna do any decay rates when it comes to paying off a loan or whatever because there's always the interest rate is always forcing the balance upwards because you have to pay interest on it. So that's always going to be a plus. And then this is the rate part. And what rate did they want? 7.9. So 0 0.079 for my interest rate. And then I can say, how often am I going to have to pay that? How often is it compounded? So then I say divided by 12 because these are monthly payments. So it's 0 0.079, divide by 12. Then you need to end your parentheses. Then comes the most important plus or minus in the whole thing, and that's to tell if you add here, you're adding every month to how much you owe, and that doesn't make sense. You usually pay off your loan. So if this is a loan, I should do a minus here, minus. And then what are my payments? 330, 330. Okay. Yep, and we're not we're not done yet. The last one here is how much do we start with? That's two thousand is what I had originally, but this car loan is going to be say seventeen thousand dollars. This is a very real possible scenario because you'd have had to pay a couple grand down. I looked at a lot of like smaller cars, new cars were running around twenty thousand or so for a smaller used car. Or, sorry, smaller new car. I was trying, trying to compare that with a used one. And I ended up, I told you before, I bought a used Lexus for 4800 bucks that I'm really happy with. Um, and it was drives really smooth and nicer than a lot of these uh, newer cars would have been that were like 17 to 20, 25 even, thousand dollars. Okay, so this is pretty good real world numbers. All right, once you have that in there, remember when we go to the table, since we did this in months, then every line on the table is a month. That's a really common 
goof up. People will say, like, after two years, what do you have? And they'll go to the second line. But two years would be 24 months. Okay, so we're on the table now. We're in months. I'm going to go to my table settings and make sure it makes sense. I'm going to not start my table at 600 months. That's crazy. I'm going to start my table at uh, one month. Or I'm going to start it at zero, whatever. And then I'm going to go to my table. And now this, actually, if I go up one notch, it will show me I started with a $17,000 loan. Do you see how it's going down? But it's not simply going down $300, $330 every month because there's interest. See, if it was as simple as no interest loan, then it would be. You'd have $17,000 loan, and you'd pay off $330 every month, and it would just subtract, subtract $330 every month. But this is a little more complicated because it's got that interest factor to it. All right, so 12 months later would be one year. So at one year, at the one year mark, I go to the 12. You see how I still owe $14,000 on my car? I started owing $17,000. Now I'm down to owing $14,000. All right. Has anybody gone down farther in the chart to see, like, where it's paid off? All right, I'm going to pause for a second while you try to find where it's paid off, and maybe I can help the person who's calculator is stuck right now. Okay, so right now my calculator is thinking. It sometimes takes a long time to think. Mine's actually on the slower side for uh, compared to other people's calculators because mine's built into the computer and somehow that slows it down. I don't know why. I'm gonna try this one more time. Okay, now this is where this this is where you're gonna earn the big points on the test. Okay. Up to now, it's pretty easy to put that into the calculator. And if I want to change the rate from 7.9% to 8.9, you're just going to change one number. It'll be super easy. The hard part is reading this. Thing. Okay, think about what this means. Turn around, please. Up this way. All right. If I'm my balance is eventually going negative, then something weird happened in there, right? So something happened. It got paid off. At 63 payments, it was not paid off. Do you get how there's 41 bucks left there? So at 64 payments, it's not only paid off, but what? What's that negative mean? I'm paying more than I needed to. In fact, I'm paying how much more than I needed to? 288 bucks. So think about this. How much did you pay them? You paid them 330 a month times how many months? 64. You should go the 64 route. Because if you go 63, you haven't paid enough. So we should go to 64 months, and we'll have paid as much as we needed to. And by law, they can't just keep that money. They have to send you that 288 bucks back. But if you, on this month, just decide, well, I'm only going to send you 63 payments, they can come and repossess your car for $41. They can, because you haven't paid them all the way off. Okay? So you have to pay the last payment, and then they'll give you a refund. A lot of times in the real world, they have it adjusted a little bit so that every payment's like, you know, 25, or cent, 25 cents more or whatever, but a lot of payments, such that you won't have to make that last payment. But anyway, in our scenarios, you will have to go to the part where it gets negative, and that's 64 payments, and 64 payments of $330, and then they'll owe you 288 back. So let me show you what to do. Go out to this screen. I'm going to clear that so you don't get confused by my previous numbers. We need to do 64 payments later times, what is it again? 330. And then we're going to add, no wait, it's not to add. First of all, let's figure out what that is. $21,000, I thought I paid $17,000 for the car. I paid extra because of what? Interest. But one last thing, they do owe me, how much do they owe me again? 
Uh, is there some sense there too or not? How much? 0.4. Okay. They owe me the $288.40 because of this. Look. Okay, anyway. So now I really paid $20,800 for this car. I was supposed to pay, I subtract off the 17000 I thought I was going to pay. And seriously, a lot of people don't know this. They don't know that they paid $3,800 to the bank for the privilege of having the loan. Okay, so you, you didn't just pay $17,000 for the car. You now paid $20,000 for the car. And the bank got the extra money. Now, is that evil? No. Banks need to make money. But if you can avoid that, if you can avoid that by saving up for the car, you can just pay for the car in the first place and only pay seventeen versus the other person who has to pay almost twenty-one thousand. You see how that's smarter? You save a lot of money that way. Here's the other thing you could do. What if you have to take a loan, but you could afford to make bigger payments, but you don't? Here's how it would have cost you. Notice we paid almost four thousand dollars in interest. How can we cut that down? Make bigger payments, and ho watch how easy this is. I'm going to go back to the y equals. I'm going to go to the line where the payment is, and instead of 330, I'm going to make $600 payments. Right there. I'm going to make $600 payments because let's say I could afford to make $600 payments, so maybe I should. Okay. Now when I go to my table, it's way paid off. So I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to cut it in half. I know it's going to take half as long. It's not going to be anywhere near 30, 60, so it's more like 30. And then I'm going to go to my table. With $600 a month payments, that thing's paid off after 32 months, and they owe me $322 back. So 32 months, now I'm going to do the math on that, 32 times $600 payments, and they'll owe me 322 32 times $600 is what I paid for this car. I only paid 19000 The other person paid 21000 See what I mean? Or I could just figure out exactly how much interest I paid by subtracting the 17000 for the car. And the interest was 2200 A lot better to pay 2200 in interest than 3800 in interest. It saves you $1,600 in interest if you pay bigger payments. Yes. Oh, did I not subtract that yet? I'm sorry. And they owe also they owe me three hundred and twenty-two dollars and fifty cents back. So I'm going to subtract off what they owe me three hundred and twenty-two dollars and fifty cents point five. So I only paid eighteen hundred and seventy-seven dollars in interest. Again, way better than almost four thousand. So this formula can calculate so many cool things for you. It can figure out how, like, if you make bigger payments, how fast can you pay off your house? That's a, one of the really smart things. We'll get into that more as, as the year goes on. We'll have a more chance to talk about how we'll use this formula. But you're going to be using it in your loans and investments project. Remember how I said we're going to make that little movie? You're going to figure out if you do take a loan for your student loans, like to go to college, that's very realistic. Many kids will have loans. The point here is just to show you how dangerous it can be to take out big loans. You take out lots of money in loans, how much the payments will have to be. And I think it'll shock you to some extent to see how big a payments you'd have to make. And I know it's some, for some people it's hard to even imagine like what a thousand dollar a month payment would be like. And so we'll tell you how much income you would need. And in a lot of cases, you, you can't possibly earn that much. Like teachers coming out that have like $70,000 in loans. You can't make, you won't earn enough money to make that payment. You can't afford to do it, not even close. So if you're going to be a job like a teacher or some job that doesn't pay a ton, you cannot get big loans. Now, if on the other hand, you're going to get a job that pays a lot, then you can get bigger loans. But even that, doctors are now coming out with, some doctors are coming out with $500,000 in debt. Now, unless you get a big job right away and, and work at it for like 30 years, that's not going to work. You, you're so far behind. You're starting out with this big negative. That can be really dangerous. There are ways to do it, too. 
if you are willing to go into the military and let them train you to be a doctor, you can get all your training paid for 100%. You can come out as a doctor and they will pay the whole bill. You just have to serve in the Army for a number of, the, like a, the number of years you serve in the Army or the Navy or the Air Force or whatever has to be equal to how many years they trained you, basically. So if they trained you for 10 years, then you've got to go work in the Army for 10 years. But then you're coming out after 10 years, having had a job, doing the real thing. You've actually been a surgeon for 10 years in the Army. Now all of a sudden you, you're out and you're free and you have no debt and you've earned money for the last 10 years. Because it's not like you have to work as their slave for 10 years. They pay you for 10 years to be a doctor. So. They probably aren't going to, you're not going to be on the front lines, like, having snipers shoot at you if you're a doctor. But I'm sure it's stressful, especially if you're in Iraq or someplace like that, being a doctor. Yeah, that would be, that'd be tough. Okay, so... I just wanted to give an option. I just don't want you to think that, oh, well, I can't, I, I'm going to have to have loans, and th therefore I am going to have to work in some really rich job or job that pays a lot. Not necessarily, but we, what we just hate to have you do is come out with big loans and then not be able to get a job that can actually afford those loans. So if you're going into something that's going to pay well, maybe you can afford bigger loans. Okay. Anyway, uh, we'll talk all that through on the project day, but if, you get, if you've got this formula in your calculator right right now, you're almost there. Okay, last thing I want to do is I want to make up a scenario where it's an investment instead of a loan. So it's really easy. Go into your Y equals screen. Let's say that you're given uh, $2,000 by your great aunt Tilly. You know where to put that. And then you're going to add to it $30 every month, and let's just leave the interest rate at 7.9% because that's about 8%, and the stock market has averaged 8% at least for, if you look over like a 50-year average. We start with 2000 in the first place, and we add $30 a month. I'm trying to make this realistic because most of you guys could find a way to make thirty grand. And 2000 bucks isn't completely unreasonable with, like, some of you guys have probably already saved up that much by, you know, working babysitting jobs or by just simply saving the money that, that people have given you at Christmas or whatever. Some of you got a lot more than that. But let's start with that 2000 amount, and let's have it grow by the same interest rate just so we don't have to mess with it. And that's about what stocks do. Stocks have averaged 8 or 9%. And that's... Divided by 12 means that we're going to make these payments. Did anybody think enough to change this minus to a plus? You need that. Plus 30. And I'm going to delete that last zero, otherwise it'll be 300. Okay, $30 a month. Now, what does this mean? This means my $2,000 is going to grow by $30 every month, plus it's going to earn interest or return in the stock market. Growth rate. So then I'm going to table and... I just realized my table's out at 30. What that means is 30 months from now, okay? I'd have this much. Now, here's the thing that you might not think about. You're going to get old. 50 years from now, you'll be about the right age to retire. This. So if you're 50 years from now, how many months is that? 50 times 12, 600 months from now. If you were to put this 30 bucks every month into the bank, that's not much. I know you know that all of you could do that. Okay, that's very realistic. 30 bucks a month is nothing. Start with the 2,000. A lot of you already have the 2,000. If you actually did this and didn't touch it until you were 600 months from now, let's go to the table settings and change that top number to 600. And then go to the table and see how much would you have when you're at retirement. Remember, this is just 200, 2,000 bucks at the beginning and then 30 bucks a month, which is super easy to be able to do. I would contend that almost anybody in America could probably work an extra little job once a month, watch somebody else's kids or something, some way to get 30 bucks. And it grows to a pretty impressive number. Is your calculator done yet? Mine's still working. It'll take a little bit. Questions or comments? Yes. Yeah, I know why. Yes.
All right, let's be specific. Here it is, $331,000 someday. So your choice is you can spend the 2000 right now, which would be very easy, very easy. It's always easy to spend money. Or you can save it and someday have 331000 Now, that's not that much. I mean, I know that sounds like a lot. It's enough to buy a house with. Okay, so it's a lot of money. But you probably would want more like a million bucks someday. It really wouldn't be that hard to do. Okay, you just got to tweak the numbers a little bit. Do you think as you get older than you are right now, you might be able to afford to save more than $30 a month? A lot of people, as they get older, can save 100 or even $1,000 a month. That's a lot. Not many parents can put away 1000 bucks a month. But at least you could be up to 100 maybe 200 bucks a month. Okay, heck, cable bills like 150 So, you know, if you decided to go without cable, you could just put that money in the bank. So... Let's change it to 150 and just do a quick, see how quick this is? I just go here, change my 30 to 150, and then I can go quick look at the results. And some of you are going to realize it's very doable to become a millionaire if you want to be. It's kind of a controversial statement. Some people would say, you're just saying that you could become, no, just time and math. You can't stop it. It's compounding. Compounding makes your money grow like this and this part right here is where it goes crazy and that's the part you only get if you have a long time you guys have a long time a lot of people wait until they're like 40 or 50 years old to start saving and then they don't have a long time they won't get this part this part this part isn't that impressive the first like 10 15 years aren't that impressive it's the last part the compounding goes nuts so if you give it 50 years like you have, you can do pretty insane things with it. It's still calculating. But we remember only started with $2,000, which is not a huge amount to start with. If you wanted to start with zero, you can change the problem to start with a zero. That would be easy. So if you want to say, well, I have nothing right now, but I could afford to save 100 bucks a month. And I'm going to go with this interest rate, which is kind of what the stock market has done over the last 60 years. Now, just to be clear, this E6 thing means to move the decimal over six spots, which, by the way, means it's $1.25 million. Okay, so you can become a millionaire if you want to be. Yes, so if you got like two million, so what the person is saying is if you got like a million or two in the bank, then if you're just getting a small amount of interest on that, that's a lot of money. Yeah, if you get like 2% interest on that, that's like 20. Yeah, if you, if you have 2 million in the bank and you get 2% interest, you've got 40,000 a year coming in just in interest on your money. Um, so that's how, you know, really wealthy people can have a bunch of money in the bank. They don't even have to work because their money just brings in enough money. Their money is working for them. So, all right, so you could have over a million dollars someday. It's not that complicated. You just need a lot of time and you've got time because you're young. The people that are kind of stuck are the people that are 50 years old and they haven't been saving yet. Now all of a sudden they want to start. Now they've only got maybe 20 years. It's too late. I've already been cut. So, all right. So anyway, uh, today was a little crazy because we had that start of the first 10 minutes that kind of threw everything off a bit. Um, and your, assi shh, your assignment right now is to take the worksheet uh, that is in, the, in Schoology. Uh, which is a review, uh, no, it's not a review, I'm sorry, it's called Loans and Investments Day 1. The key has been posted with it, I just got that done a minute ago, got it posted anyway. So your assignment is to do the Loans and Investments Worksheet. Uh, now that you have this in your calculator, it'll be way easier for you. Okay, and that's all I got for you for today. Save.